Hi, I'm Bob Fallowfield. If you're like me, you enjoy rail fanning and model railroading. And if you're like me, you enjoy engaging in interesting conversations about all things trains. Please join me and my friends on the platform. This portion of the platform is brought to you by Rumets, the fastest way to bring the illusion of 3D detail to the insides of your model railroad structures. And by ITLA Scale Models, where the city meets the railway, providing unique and configurable laser cut structure kits to the modeling community. Hello everyone, welcome back to The Platform, the video podcast for the rail fan and the model railroader alike. We are on the north shore of Lake Ontario, somewhere between Toronto and Montreal, and we are watching trains and we are talking trains, and we thank you for joining us on The Platform tonight. Tonight I have to my right, the one and only, oh, there's probably more than one Bob Scott on the planet. I'm sure there is. But you're the only one we care about right now. Bob Scott, owner of the Credit Valley Railway Company, cvrco.ca. Uh, Bob is the owner of Credit Valley, the largest hobby shop in Canada, also known as Candyland. Beside Bob, it's good candy. It's very Great good candy. candy. Yeah, H.O. Candy. Next to Bob is Dave McLean. Dave is the co-founder of Little Canada. You can check them out online at... Little little-canada.ca little-canada.ca Dave is also an O-Scale modeler and a member of the O-Scale Model Railroad Club of Toronto. That's correct. Did I get that right? You did. Awesome. Last and not least is my personal security and bodyguard and right-hand man, my good buddy Neil Schofield. Neil's from the Boston area. Neil is my brother in Action Red. We are modeling CP Rail in 1980. Neil, every time I introduce you, I say we, and the introduction's about you, not about me, but that's how connected I feel to you. Brothers. Okay. Brothers by a different mother. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. Says, Some okay. actually have said we're twins. Uh, I don't no. see it. No, I don't, I don't know about I don't that, see Bob. It. I don't know. I don't see it. Fraternal. <laughs> yeah. I think it's more like Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. Boy, that's a, yeah. that's a compliment, I you guess. You want to be Arnie or you want to be Danny? I'd, I'd be Danny. I'm fine with Danny. Yeah? I'm, I'm going with the Danny, guns? Yeah. You're the one with the guns yeah, there, brother. That's all right. kind of liking that. <laughs> okay. We have a fourth guest joining us on the platform who will rudely interrupt us at any time, and that is the Railway. This is the video podcast for the rail fan and model railroader. So if you are a rail fan, you're going to take in the trains in real time as they pass by our platform here. Guys, tonight I want to talk about something I saw on the internet this week, and I kind of chuckled, and then I actually kind of had a little moment of introspection. <laughs> I saw a thing on the internet, and it was a graphic t-shirt, and it said, I am one train away from starring on an episode of Hoarders. My question for you, when does it stop being a collection? And when does it become hoarding? Don't, don't ask my wife that question. Right? Just, <laughs> that is a matter of perspective. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Who's watching Her this again? <laughs> yeah. Her mind, I'm clearly, clearly there. In my mind, there's a ways to go. Yeah. What do you think about that, Dave? Uh, let's be honest. We all have stuff in our basements, train rooms, barns, wherever we do our hobby. Right. What do you think? When does it become hoarding and not just collecting? I don't know. I guess that's a great question. I, I would say, you know, if, it, if it's hoarding, if you're just buying it and it never gets out of the box, it never gets out of the original packaging, it's just there and it ends up cluttering up your dining room or your living room or you know, every nook and cranny in your house is full of un, unopened boxes. Maybe there's a problem. Um, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe there's not. Yeah. Um, or well. maybe you're a true collector. Uh, yeah. I mean, we had a, a customer a number of years ago. Unfortunately, he's passed away now. And <clears throat> when, we, when we were um, privileged enough to kind of help those that received the, the items to help clear it out of their house, mm -hmm. um, his whole house was, was trains. He, didn't, he had a little small piece of track, but 
in the kitchen, he had, you know, a knife, a fork, a spoon, a cup, and then the next cupboard was Cato engines, and the next cupboard was Atlas engines, and in the living room were, were stacks of Proto 2000 engines and Walther's buildings, and upstairs in the bedrooms, the, the cupboards would open and there'd be military equipment. He was into uh, building, you know, uh, 143rd scale, wow. you know, airplanes and, and all that as well. But he had complete lists of everything, itemized. He had boxes downstairs that, you know, you'd open it up and there'd be a, a list of everything that was in there, how much he bought it for, when he bought it. Um, a true collector of, of products. And he just really enjoyed the, the, the search, the finding. I always remember him walking around at train shows with clipboards. Really? And, he'd, and he'd see something that he might like and he'd flip through a few pages to see if he had that item or not. So that's, that's interesting. So he wasn't just collecting for the sake of having it. There was actually a purpose. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was almost like a, I, I don't want to use the word game, but it was, it was right. a enjoyment for him to go out and try to find what he was looking for. I guess I, I'd almost make the analogy, of you might be a hoarder if you can't remember what you have. Yeah. Like I, I, I I think for the most part I know what I have. <laughs> what but, camp are you in, Schofield? There's, there's surprises downstairs, I'm I sure. Where I had for breakfast, I, I don't know about you. Yeah. 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 So you really got a whole bunch of CN stuff in your basement, like Bob does. Uh, I'm a closet for a lot of things, so, uh, but yeah, I have a lot of stuff in the basement that, um, huh. that uh, you know, I had plans to do something with someday. You know, back in the day, you know, I. I Remember Front Range Jeep 9s? Yes. I had uh, a bunch of those. I was going to do Central Vermont at one time. Of course, they got sidetracked. 20 years later, you can go and Genesis release, releases uh, Grand Trunk Jeep 9s, and you can make them CV and all that stuff. So Now the so. Front Range project has lost its luster. Oh, yeah. Because why yeah. would you bother? Why would, yeah, right. why would yeah. I spend the time and effort when uh, I can buy it off the shelf? But, yeah, I've got, got a few projects downstairs that probably never see the light of the day for sure. Yeah. So... Isn't that true though of all of us? We, you know, you buy projects or you buy, buy a model or something and you think, well, I'm gonna get to that one day. And then, then you realize <laughs> that one day 10 years later has <laughs> gone by and it's, I'm like, hmm, that, that, that flat car kit, gee, that looked really, really enticing at the day. But oh, I'd rather work over on this one over yeah, here, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and it just gets piled in the corner. Yeah, you know? that's true. I think we're all guilty, me, me and two. It's, you can be as disciplined as you want Right. You've honed in on an era, and that helps me from hoarding. Uh, maybe hoarding worse <laughs> yeah. than I yeah. do is honing in on an era and a specific railway. Yeah. So for me, I'm October 80. It's a Galt sub. It's it's Woodstock. That's what I'm doing. So as much as I have a little thing for Chessy or I have a little thing for Burlington Northern, right. it looks nice on your shelf. But I'm gonna I'm gonna pass. Yeah. I'll just buy an extra CP unit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that helps? I think it does. Prototype I really model. do. I, I know it provides discipline for me when I go to the hobby shop. I mean, there's, there's so many great things out there. I mean, especially for my era, 1970s, 1980s, every, every month or two, there's something that fits that era or that, that time frame, but it might not be specific right. to, to the layout. You know, I'm modeling the Connecticut River line. And Bob and I had some discussions previously about the type of traffic that ran on that line. Yep. And right. I try and stay a little bit disciplined to the, the car types that right. might have shown right. up on that. Right, and, uh, that's decent. It, Notice he yeah, tempered his comment with a little bit. A little bit. Tries, a little to, bit. tries to stay a little bit. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Track. But yeah, there's, yeah. there's plenty of uh, one-offs and stuff. And there's, that, and there's uh, people out there that are absolutely specific on a certain error or timing. But, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's their way of controlling, I think, what they get, what they're into. Um, they want to have some purpose behind their railroad. Some people just want to buy whatever, you know, buy, buy everything that's blue because they like the color blue yeah. or something. I mean, it sounds silly, but sometimes color sells an item. <laughs> right, and, yeah. you know, yeah. for, especially for kids that are getting into it, you know, and they, or they want to see something that, you oh, know. Yeah, you think of the old train sets that you used to yeah. buy that had a red box car and a green one and a red yellow caboose. tank car yeah. and a red caboose and... Well, Maybe some a, some of the manufacturers offering a lot of like Rapido on their point or their CP caboose, all the chess, what they did chassis system they did all kinds of roads on that yeah. um, that weren't obviously prototypical right. but they sell probably yes yeah. yeah they all they all sold really well and again it's 
you know, a lot of times people want to model what they see. Sometimes they just, because they, they see something they really like, they want to put it on the railroad. Um, that's almost a problem because if I see something, because of what I model, O scale Dominion Atlantic Railway, 1958, if something shows up on eBay that would completely fit my era, you jump at it. I, I kind of feel almost ob <laughs> obligated. obligated. Yes. Yeah. You know, I can't let this go. I have to get it. <laughs> and it becomes, you know, I, you, you have an analogy. Well, to me, it's almost like going out fishing. You know, it's like, it's the thrill of the catch. Yeah, I have to get it. I have to get it, right? And you're watching the eBay timer. Oh my God, am I going to get this? Yeah, and Doing then, the sniping, and, and then, oh then it comes yeah. home, and my wife says, "How many box cars do you need?" Yeah. Oh, right. One so more. One more. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's fun. So uh, you bring that up. Like my my wife can't understand the concept. So Rapido announced their 3,800 cubic foot um, uh, cement hoppers in the CP rail, and on my railroad. They, they were often common blocks that ran from Wilmington, Massachusetts, up right. to some of the plants in uh, Canada. So it was often a block of five or six. So when I walked home with nine boxes, I walked in the house with nine boxes, why do you need nine of the same type of freight cars? That you was could, your first mistake. Yeah, well, well that smart you know, guy. Now here's Leave the question. In the truck. Do you sneak them in the basement, right? <laughs> Well, I sure. snuck six in, the other three, you know, <laughs> I bought three new cars, honey, and, uh, but it's, um, you know, that's, sometimes you have to have more than one, so that's the situation. My advice to any model railroader who purchases maybe their first home, put in new basement windows with good side <laughs> sliders, <laughs> and maybe a little, sh maybe a little shelf on that's the right, inside, right. Or, or a padded chute, right. yeah. you know, like the video <laughs> store, you take your video, oh boy, the 90s called, they want their video <laughs> store back, you take your rental back, and it goes down the chute yeah. into the, that's a great idea, you just have a tube with a track on it, yeah. right, and just yeah. let it go, and yeah, just <laughs> slide her in, and then you walk in the front door, hey, how's Hi. it going, look at I'm empty handed That's again. Funny. Yeah. I bought you some flowers. Yeah, it's funny <laughs> yeah. how that works. <laughs> what did you buy, honey, as soon as I walked in with yeah. the flowers? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny, you know, well, it you goes even <laughs> down to the, we had we have a customer that we have to take the stickers off the packages before he puts them in the bag to <laughs> take them home. And it can't be a marked bag, it's got to be an unmarked mm. bag. Wow. But, or you can have a loving wife that, you know, sees you enjoying something and Encourages or, it. Or, encourages or, or get involved she, in it even. Maybe she gets involved in another hobby that's even more expensive, like <laughs> horses. <laughs> <laughs> How would I know you were going to say it's, that? Geez, it's like a brass locomotive a month. Yeah. Right, yeah. The brass locomotive uh, a month club. Yeah. yeah. I think there might be another reason, too, why people tend to uh, hoard, or and th this has been true for me, is we now live in a world of the limited production run. Right. Yes. And yeah. so if you're modeling... And Neil had referenced the Rapido 3800 hopper, where you don't just need one. Maybe yeah. you need six, maybe you need eight. Maybe you have, um, mm. Bob, you're doing the banger and rustic. You need potato cars or, you know, you need whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you got to get, you them, gotta while get the them while the getting's good because yeah. a lot of times... You won't see them again. You might not see them again. Because the cycles of the manufacturers are such that they might not get back to doing that car again for... Yeah, in your lifetime. <laughs> yeah, well, or three or four years or in your lifetime, depending on what happens. But, yeah, yeah I mean, if, if, if you're modeling something and this is what you want to do and you need certain cars, right. I say need in a, a, a lax kind of a way, but you need potato reefers and somebody makes them, then yeah. you're going to buy them. Even yeah. if you're, that part of the layout isn't finished for another five or six years. It's nice to have them, them now. Away. Do you think that the limited production run is a good thing? Or, you know, you're, you know, you're the, the master retailer of the, the hobby in Canada, I would say. I mean, what do you think about limited production runs? Do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? Um, for the modeler, it's probably not a good thing um, because you have to almost be in tune with everything all the time, especially with the 30 days that most manufacturers give you as a window to order. You know, if you go away for two months mm. on business, and you come back, you've missed something. Right. Um, but at the other, you, you understand what manufacturers are up against and they don't want inventory items. Right. They want to, you know, build something, make it, sell it out, and then get on to the next item. You know, the, the, the customer today wants to see more and more and more. Um, <clears throat> everybody talks about Ather and Blue Boxes, but Back in the day, you know, you might see a new kit every six months or a year, whereas people almost expect manufacturers like Athern or Scale Trains to come out with something new almost monthly. Wow. 
you know, and they can't afford to do that if they've got inventory sitting around of that product. They've right. got to make sure they can sell it. So the only way to do that is almost create an artificial demand where it's limited run and out the door Speaking it goes. Speaking of that, I, I'm not a not necessarily a big Amtrak guy, but I know Walters did the Viewliner mm -hmm. cars, and I think somebody I saw it on Facebook post that the Viewline, the Walters Viewliner cars were selling on eBay for upwards of like sixteen hundred dollars. I what? saw something like that, some oh. crazy amounts, and I'm not really that up on the the cars to see what they're really worth, but that seemed they're worth what someone's willing to pay for. Pay for them. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they're worth. Yeah. But there was a few of them on there. I think that sixteen was the extreme, but there was some certainly for three or four hundred dollars. And I'm thinking that's probably a hundred dollar car, maybe. Maybe back in the day, probably yeah. sixty or seventy, yeah. Yeah. So But again, I mean, as you say, it's relative. I i I know I've seen like a Canadian set, like the ones that mm -hmm. Rapido did a number of years ago that were fifteen or sixteen hundred dollars. If somebody brings one in on a on an estate, it'll it'll sell easily for two wow, to two and a half. Yeah. Wow! And I've seen it on eBay. I've seen somebody say they saw it, you know, for three or four thousand. Wow! When people are buying them, and then, well, again, you, as you said, people buy what they want when they want it. If they miss out, then if they see it again, like yourself, you're right. going to be kicking yourself. Oh, I right. wanted a Canadian, but I missed it when it came out. Right. So it's not going to be done again, likely. It'll never be done again. I know that yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Dave, we were talking about your slab side hoppers in O scale. Tell us about that and the production run and how oh, you that's found the, them. You know, um, oh, that's a great, you know, another. Because um, um, you kind of hoarded those. Yeah, we did. Um, <laughs> um, and proud of it. Overland <laughs> made the Canadian slab side hoppers, and I understand they made about 100 um, O scale um, models. Um, so when um, I actually came across it kind of on a back backwards way into a website um, where this guy was offering six of them for sale. Um, so we just pounced on it and said, you know, they, these, you'll never see six again in one sale. You see one, one being sold on, the, on eBay or something at 350 bucks, 400 bucks for They're one They're on cart. deck, right? They're on deck? Uh, some are painted, yeah. Oh, really? Some okay. are painted. Yeah. Um, um, even Steve, Steve, uh, Steve um, Bourdon, I think, painted a, a bunch of them yes. back in the day. Yeah. Um, Were they a mix around on Square Hatch? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Nice. Um, so you yeah. found six of them. Yeah, obviously. and and so the you know with the production wow. run of 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 a hundred, you know, we bought six, and we a few members had probably another six, so we have twelve of of a hundred. So you know we've uh, so you have twelve Overland O scale. You get twelve percent of what the run was. brass slab side hoppers. Well, some are some are uh, TH and B. Or, okay. You know, yeah. And some are CM, but still the uh, the whole run was a hundred. Yeah. Of everything. So you have twelve percent of the entire production right. run. Right. Right. Yeah. See, even I could do that math. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, I mean, that's, that's, you know, th is that hoarding or is it opportunistic Well, I think right? it's so striking while the iron's hot. Right. Yeah. And plus, yeah. they're all running on the layout, right? Or more, or yeah. pretty close to it? Yeah. 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 Along with that. Yeah. So if, if, as long as Bob's not there. I, <laughs> I actually think that um, you guys know me and you know that I have a heart for people to get engaged in the hobby. There's so many people that talk about the hobby. And there's people that do the hobby. And I know that all of us here are doers of the hobby. And people have their reasons. And I understand that. And I can be a little tough on people sometimes. More of a tough love sense where I want to encourage people to go downstairs, open up that Rubbermaid tub, get that Atlas box car out that you bought at Credit Valley in 1994. <laughs> and, 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 and pull it out. For, we're talking for about 15 somebody? bucks or yeah. something. Yeah. 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 Okay, Neil, I'm talking to you. Okay. <laughs> it's, right, it's, about, it's about time you stopped the talking and you actually... I'll get building someday. Yeah, you did something, okay? Um, but but I only had CP Rail layouts to be inspired by. I really don't, <laughs> you know, stuff I see on the internet and Facebook just inspired But me go downstairs much. and take that box car out and, and open it up. And even if you did nothing more but got rid of those crappy lobster claw right. salad tongue Accumate couplers... And change the couplers, maybe paint. It sounds like he doesn't like Accumate. <laughs> I <laughs> share your true feelings. I Please. loathe those couplers. If I could get a hug, it'd really go a long way to calm me down. But do nothing more than take that car out, maybe paint the wheels a rust or a grimy color, put some good KDs on there, whatever flavor of KD you like, whatever number, maybe dull coat the thing. And even if you did nothing more, you've now done something. Right. And I and I, and we. We say that, and I don't mean it in a condescending way, I mean it in an encouraging buddy way, that sometimes if you start with something like that, 
it can be a confidence builder. And now you say, well, gee, that didn't bite me. And that actually worked out. And, you know, nothing. Let's do do another. No tragedy, you know, came about. Right. So maybe you do another one. And then maybe you buy some decals. That's Canadian for decal, Neil. (laughs) You get yourself some. decal to me. You get yourself some decals. And, and maybe you change a number. And, and next thing you right. know, now yeah. you've gone from being a collector to a and doer. To, yeah. to a doer. Right. And, and it's not that if you're a collector, you're not a model railroader. It's not about labels. But for me, the enjoyment of the hobby is doing the hobby. And I'm going to get mail and I'm going to get messages and it's okay. I'll take it on the shoulders. There's more to the hobby than going to a store buying something and taking it home and putting it away and forgetting about it for 20 right. years. For me, it's about you're robbing yourself of the potential joy. Right, yeah. And and, it's th- and, and do, do you guys find it therapeutic when you're actually at the bench oh, yeah. doing yeah. I mean, something? So I'm many, not totally. thinking about my Turn the TV return. off. Yeah. Turn the TV off and go and do something productive. Yeah, yeah. You put the I mean, phone down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. for me, yeah. running a business is, is hard work. But it just happens that my business is also my hobby. Mm-hmm. And when I shut that door, when I go downstairs, I've separated my business from my hobby. And so many people I talk to at the, at the store, uh, customers can't understand that. Because maybe they can't, I don't know. But, you know, I go in there, I get lost in my world of 1979 Bangor, Maine. And, and I model and enjoy it and you, you totally separate yourself. And I think that's what you're getting to is your people are robbing themselves of that if they're just stick it in a box and yeah. walk away. Right. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I know people are squirreling stuff away maybe for retirement. You know, they're going to retire in five years. They've got a property. They're going to build. I, I get that. I totally get that. That's good management, if nothing else. Buy it while you can. But I think we're smart people here, and we all know what we're talking about. It's the people that just squirrel stuff away and there's no plan other than the purchase. Yeah. You know. There's nothing well, wrong with that. I great guess. for the hobby shop yeah. owner because if... Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Bob, you win either way. I mean, well, once I leave the store... But with, not... You know, well, not really because you've bought that, you've put it away and that's... I'm not going to buy any couplers. You're not going to buy any couplers. <laughs> you're not going to buy any... Like, you're not enjoying the hobby. The, the reason the hobby store is there is for people to come in and enjoy something in their life. You know, and whether it be model trains or planes or whatever, get out and do something that you're enjoying. Right. Mm-hmm. And and don't just tuck it away somewhere. I think that's... But that's a good point. If people are doing the hobby, if I'm a doer of the hobby, I'm going to buy more stuff because now I'm into decal solution. I'm into yeah. decals. I'm into yeah. couplers. I'm into detail parts. Styrene, knives, choppers. Yeah. Yep. Everything. The other, the other interesting thing about so-called hoarding and, and the collectors is at, at some point, I mean, it's, it's a sad reality of life, is that we're not immortal, we're not going to last forever, right. and at some point those collections become estate sales, and yeah. then it's like a turning over of the topsoil. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like right. crop management. You know, you turn the soil <laughs> over and, and, and out, it, and out, it, out it comes again. Yeah. Yeah. Right, better that than a dumpster, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Guys, our fourth guest uh, was a little shy. Yeah. yeah, shy tonight. So, yeah, um, much, but should Neil, we complain? You didn't, you didn't get interrupted, that's as okay. per usual. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, can, uh, it's probably just gonna be another passenger. Yeah. Train, so, well, this has been an enjoyable discussion. I feel a little better about the <laughs> my my hoarding uh, situation. This is like therapy to you, right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 You talk Bye. about it, it feels better. Maybe uh, right. maybe yeah. I should go back on online and see if I can find that T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys, for being here as always, and a wonderful chat. And thanks again for joining us on the platform. We'll see you next time.